Hi guys, I'm Dr. Kenneth Hall. I'm a Jamaican-born surgeon that lives in New York. And as most of you know, this is the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic. For this video, I just wanted to focus primarily on my West Indian people, my Caribbean people, as it relates to you know how they're faring, and I would like to make some recommendations uh, relating to dieting, prevention, and also talk about some updates. What is the latest information? Mask versus no mask social distancing does it make sense and some of the other tips that i've learned over the past several months talking to friends and colleagues all over the world so let's get right into it so coronavirus particularly covid19 this is the main cause of this uh, pandemic that we have now and one of the main modes of transmission is through the air cough droplets airborne aerosolized conditions all three We've seen all of these means. And that's why they're purported social distancing because they believe the further you are from an infected person, the less the risk. And it does make sense to some extent. Six feet may not be enough. We've seen cases where up to 27 feet, uh, if somebody coughs or sneezes, uh, uh, droplets and liquid can go that far actually. Uh, we do know that the coronavirus does uh, particularly enter the body through the, the nose or the mouth going to the upper respiratory tract and ultimately into the lungs. Most people who are affected will have some type of inflammatory response and typically you'll see fevers. And that's the, the most uh, common sign. And later on, depends on your immune system and depending on what's going on with you, whether you have medical problems or you're elderly, you may have secondary findings such as shortness of breath. And that is primarily related to the amount of fluid that's produced in the lung. Now you do have what you call white blood cells. And the main purpose of white blood cells are to fight infections, fight viruses, and fight bacteria. Oftentimes, there's an overwhelming response, and that's typically what we see in these uh, coronavirus COVID-19 patients. There's an overwhelming response. The body produces a lot of chemicals, uh, which causes severe inflammation in the lung and the difficulty of breathing. So in short, you're basically drowning in your own secretions. And it's not necessarily the virus, it's just a response from your body to the virus. So what can you do? Now there are different medications, there's different therapies. I don't think anyone have the right answer for it. They're working on vaccines, but so far nothing is 100% effective. Uh, we know that there is some benefit from some patients with anti-malarial medicines and drugs, and we have tried it, and we have seen uh, some improvement in some of these patients. But I also like to talk about some of the other avenues in which we can boost our immune system, especially as people of West Indian origin. You know, we grew up uh, eating certain foods and vegetables and fruits and uh, just some knowledge, some basic knowledge can help uh, improve your overall uh, immune system and probably reduce the chance that you'll get some of these infections. We don't know for sure. And by no means am I trying to replace your primary care doctor or the advice from the government but this is just common sense information that most of you already know. Um, so let's talk about something that's uh, that's very important to me. I've seen in the past several weeks that you know family, friends have been very stressed. It's a very high stress state, and high anxiety state. And of course, that's very reasonable under the circumstances. People are dying daily all over the world from this virus, and it seems that there's no end in sight. So I've coined this term, I call it CIA, Corona Induced Anxiety. And believe me, sometimes I think I have it. Oftentimes I cough, I sneeze, I believe, oh my gosh, I have the coronavirus and I'm freaking out and my heart rate increases, I'm constantly stressed. You know, people are going through this all over the world. They believe they have the virus, number one, or secondly, they're confined to their, their homes. There's not enough activities. There's no hand in sight. People have this overwhelm, overwhelming sense of doom, like what is going on, like we're losing control. And most of you are touched in one way or another, whether directly or indirectly. It's hard to find a person that's not affected by it. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I knew no one. No, I have family members, I have friends, I have people intubated on ventilators, fighting for their life right now. I have doctors, lawyers, this disease basically no, no boundaries. Rich, poor, white, black, Indian, Chinese, whatever it is, this can affect you. So protection and prevention is key. You know, stay home. 
If you don't have to go out, stay home. That's the most important prevention. And this thing about mask, me personally, I wear mask everywhere I go, sometimes two. You know, I, we're on the front line. We have to take care of patients with, with COVID-19. We just have to be suited up, gowned up, be smart, cover your ears, your eyes, wherever you go. I see people walking around in the supermarkets all over the place, not enough protective gear. Believe me, it does not make sense. Whether or not these things work, why not be safe? Common sense measures will save your life. So my recommendation is wear a mask all the time, wear it properly, because you never know when you may come in contact with somebody. And this disease is particularly virulent because the latency period is different. And some diseases will get sick right away. With the coronavirus, there are many patients who are active carriers and we have five, six days with no symptoms. And some patients are symptomless, but they can be asymptomatic carriers, meaning they can pass it to somebody else without even knowing. So you can actually go home, infect your entire family and not even know it. So that is the problem with this. And for some people, it's rapidly proliferative. So in 24 hours, you can be very sick, very, very sick. So you have to be very careful. So prevention is key in this regard. Um, I think, again, your diet is a place that has a lot to do with your immune system. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things before. You know, recently I saw an article, I believe, in the um, New York Post about this Jamaican guy. Uh, I think his name was uh, Rayburn uh, Fairweather. And I really commend him because I know he's on the front lines. He's a respiratory therapist at one of the hospitals in New York. And, you know, he got the coronavirus in a very short period of time. There's certain cocktails and regimens that he used and it really helped boost his immune system. So I'll spend a minute or so going through some of the stuff that I do personally on a daily basis to kind of help protect me uh, with, with, with this uh, situation and this crisis. So the first thing, I do a chewable multivitamin, I think is very important. Uh, in my case, I do it organic just because I think it's better. Chewable, I think absorb is better. Gel caps are also good and also liquid multivitamins, but that's limited by the taste. And a lot of people can't really deal with the taste. Earborn, I think this is really good. Also, emergency, you can get that at your local pharmacy, CVS or wherever you are. I think that's good. Anything to boost your immune system. Uh, Tea of Life, I drink every day. I've been drinking this for many years. Uh, pleasure brand, similar ingredient. I've been drinking that also. I try to exercise, I try to run, whatever you can do to boost your immune system. So do exercises at home as much as you can. Read, now is a good time to pick up reading. Get your family closer together, bond more, pray together. This is a difficult time, but we can, together we can, united, uh, beat this, uh, this, this dreaded virus. Um, I also like to address uh, certain other things that we, I believe is if, effective. I drink kale juice with uh, ginger, uh, green apples, and kale. Well, I'm sorry, kale, green apples, ginger, I think is very good. You can also have had a touch of turmeric. There's some people purporting that lime juice works very well. We know based on certain evidence that vitamin C has a very effective role in helping uh, to fight uh, uh, certain viruses. I've received intravenous vitamin C before, but that's difficult to get. So you have all these fruits and vegetables back home. Uh, have all your, as much as you can in terms of your oranges, your citrus fruit, etc. This will help in boost your vitamin C uh, intake. Also zinc, there's a lot of studies that tell you that zinc is really good in fighting uh, infections, particularly virus infections. So improve your zinc, take your vitamin C, exercise, and I believe ultimately that will boost your immune system. And of course, stay away, you know, I don't want to make this video any longer, but um, at some point I'll do some other parts as more information come out relating to coronavirus. But, you know, if if you have to leave your house for any reason, and of course you have to go to the supermarket, you have to buy food sometimes, sometimes you have no choice. If you have to go, like we say in Jamaica, walk good. If not, tana yayad. This is Dr. Kenneth Hall, hoping that I have shed some light on this information. Stay tuned, I'll be releasing more videos to break it down in a nutshell for everybody to be able to understand. God bless us all. Thank you very much.